Okay, you know who you are, the folks who either have to move to Idaho because of a job transfer or a change in your living situation, think marriage, divorce, or caring for elderly parents. Or you're the folks who are leaving your current state because you're looking for some place you feel is better. Now, I'm not going to get into the reasons why you feel Idaho would be better than where you live now. That's a topic for another video. But today, let's talk about the stuff that worries pretty much everyone when leaving one state for another, regardless of why they're moving or where they're moving to. I'm an Idaho-born realtor here in the Boise area. My name's Laura Triratinopat, and I hear my clients express these worries all the time. Maybe not all, but some. Not everyone has all these concerns, but most of you will have some of them. So I'm gonna start with financial worries in this first video. Social and cultural worries, I'll talk about those in a separate video next week. Okay, first of all, housing cost and housing availability. These should be at the top of the list for anyone moving to Idaho or moving anywhere. And I'm not just saying that because I'm a realtor. Like most of the US, Idaho is seriously undersupplied with housing for sale. A lot of our currently available housing is new builds, which are always going to be more pricey than resale homes of the same size in the same area, and which often require you to be part of an HOA or homeowners association. If and when mortgage rates go down to an affordable level, and I think that'll be soon, we should see more resale homes in the market here in Idaho's Treasure Valley. But I also think we will then see more people trying to buy in Idaho, driving prices back up again. So trying to time the market is really difficult and it can even be risky. Frankly, if you can afford to buy now, I would say do it, refinance later. If you keep watching for interest rates to go down, you'll need to be prepared to buy very quickly before the market figures out what's happening and prices go back up again. If you need a very specific type of housing, let's say a home with an attached or detached auxiliary dwelling unit, that would be a mother-in-law's quarters or granny cottage, you will have even less housing to choose from, so plan accordingly. Anyone moving to Idaho needs to have some flexibility when it comes to the type of housing they want. If you're inflexible, you may never find a house to buy here. Next, hand in hand with housing costs, you'll have to look at the overall cost of living in Idaho. It's not difficult to pull up statistics online to get a sense of Idaho's current cost of living compared to your home state, or better yet, make a city to city comparison. There's a website called numbeo.com, which allows you to do just that. Right now, mid-March 2024, comparing Boise to Los Angeles California, you would need $7,750 a month in LA to maintain the same standard of living that you can have for $5,500 in Boise, assuming you're renting in both cities. Generally speaking, numbio.com says consumer prices in LA are 28% higher than in Boise without rent. If you include rent, LA is about 40% higher than Boise in terms of consumer prices, and that's because rents in LA are almost 63% higher than they are here in Boise. LA's restaurant prices run 40% higher, groceries 32%, but keep in mind LA residents have about 5% more purchasing power. In other words, they earn more than Boiseans. Oddly enough, Boiseans pay more for Coke, Pepsi, and bottled water, but that's about it. And who really needs Coke, Pepsi, and bottled water? My tap water here in Meridian, Idaho is perfectly fine to drink, so I'll just fill up my water bottle from the kitchen faucet and save money, and I don't drink Coke or Pepsi. Anyway, don't take my word for it. Use websites like Numbio or some of the others to make comparisons between your current city and the Idaho city you're thinking of moving to. Some things, like the fact that it costs 60% more to rent a tennis court per hour in Boise, may surprise you. And yes, that one is probably because of Boise's relative lack of tennis courts for rent versus the number of courts available in always sunny Los Angeles. Number three, there's no benefit to living in a relatively cheaper state if you don't have an income. So what do you do for a living now? What do you hope to be doing for a living in the future? And does Idaho even have available jobs in those fields? How much does someone earn in your field here in Idaho versus what they earn where you live now? You really have to ask yourself these questions and dig into it before you move. There's a good chance you'll earn a bit less in Idaho depending on the field. If you're moving because of a job transfer, then you're probably golden. You know you'll have a job once you arrive in the gem state 
and you should know exactly how much you'll be earning, and I hope you will have dug into the details of what your benefits will be, especially your insurance. But what if you're starting a business in Idaho or taking your current business with you when you come here? Well, make sure Idaho has adequate numbers of trained employees in that field. Please keep in mind that Idaho is a largely conservative state with a much less generous welfare system than in some states. If your current state government provides all or part of your income, that's not going to happen here in Idaho, not very likely at all, so keep that in mind. Okay, number four, taxes and regulations. Well, Benjamin Franklin said there are two things certain in life, death and taxes, and I know that many people feel overtaxed in their home state, and that's one of their reasons for moving to Idaho. It's their perception that taxes will be lower here. Now, this may be true, or it may not, depending on where you're moving from, the state or the city that you're moving from. Keep in mind that federal income taxes are essentially the same no matter which state you live in. So that's one thing that's going to be the same. The rubber hits the road when it comes to sales tax, state income tax, and property taxes. Idaho has a 6% sales tax on just about anything, including cars and groceries, but not homes, thank goodness. Some individual cities may have a local sales tax. You can easily compare the sales tax rate here to your own state. If you have a good idea of how much you spend each month on taxable items, well, then you can figure out how much you'll save or not save by moving to Idaho. What about state income tax? Now, I want you to keep in mind I'm a realtor. I'm not an accountant, so please don't consider this to be tax advice. You need to get your tax advice from an accountant. According to the internet, Idaho has a flat 5.8% individual income tax rate, or for businesses, a flat 5.8% corporate income tax rate. So how does that compare to taxes where you currently live? Finally, property taxes. Property taxes can be a huge burden to homeowners. Idaho offers a homeowner's exemption that reduces but does not eliminate property taxes on your primary residence. That's where you actually live. These property taxes vary city by city because road districts, school districts, fire districts, other amenities vary by city or county. But you can find online resources to compare general Idaho property taxes to those of other states. The Wallet Hub website ranks Idaho as 10th lowest in the nation for property taxes. Keep in mind though, this is an average from across the state. Very rural areas of Idaho with few amenities may have very low property taxes. As you move into the more populated parts of the state with more amenities being paid for from property taxes, expect that the property taxes will be higher. The best way to make a comparison with your current situation is to choose an Idaho city and ask a realtor like me for details on the local property tax rate and the median home price in that city. Then you can make an intelligent comparison. For goodness sake, don't listen to rumors. I was helping a buyer a couple of years ago who was insistent that she didn't want to live in a particular county here in Idaho, even though that county had relatively low housing prices and had much, much more of the very specific type of housing she was looking for. When I dug down into her reasons for rejecting that county, well, it turns out she had heard a rumor from a friend in her home state about that county's tax rates. And the rumor was absolutely incorrect. We got the actual facts from the county assessor, and we used those to calculate her probable property tax bill. She was then able to buy a home that she loves in that county. So please, get your info from a professional. I'm always happy to help with questions like these. By the way, if this info is helpful, please give the video a like or a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Thank you. Okay, finally, number five. And this one, I've gotta say, makes me really sad. And that is the state of our healthcare here in Idaho. It's not that it's bad quality, it's just that our ratio of doctors and nurses and other medical specialists, medical personnel, is way out of whack, given the number of people who have moved to Idaho over the last decade. Higher salaries or better working conditions elsewhere also play a part. Doctors and nurses are leaving Idaho for greener pastures, and so we're having trouble finding replacements. At least two small hospitals in the Gracie, greater Boise area, one in my hometown, have closed their childbirth centers in the last year due to medical personnel shortages. So I will say this, if you are a medical professional of any kind, we need you. Please do move to Idaho. Right now, much of Idaho's medical care 
is centered here in the greater Boise area, or what we call the Treasure Valley. Small rural towns have had a doctor shortage for many, many years, but now it's getting harder to get specialist appointments right here in the heart of Idaho's population center where most of the doctors are. So if you or a family member require very specialized medical treatment, be sure to get a referral to an Idaho specialist before you move. Do your research to be sure that the kind of specialist you need is even available here at all. And if not, how far will you have to travel to get to one? And do find out what your health insurance options will be once you move. You absolutely don't want a bad surprise when it comes to your health care. In the second part of this video series, which I'll be posting in a week, I'm going to talk more about the social and cultural worries that people have when moving to Idaho from another state. Thank you for watching.